All right, so tonight's subject is James Bond. Well, I'm I'm wrapped <laughs> up for Quantum of Solace. Me too. I've been two uh, two months, less than two months, or something like that. Yeah, I can't wait. Mid November, right? That's where we'll be opening night. So. That's right. Hey, I want to see if they. We'll break. go through. We'll go through that whole. All right, who's getting the tickets? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where are we? Who's, who's leaving work early? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the only time I go to the movies. Yeah. It's got to be James Bond, Die Hard, Indiana Jones, something I grew up with yeah. coming into the theaters for before I'll go and see it because yeah. I just don't like theaters anymore. Mm. <laughs> but I, I mean, I figure with, with Quantum of Solace coming out, I'm really revved to see it. I love Casino Royale. I just thought maybe we could just get a discussion on Bond going and we can compare notes. Well, let's let's I tell you what, let's let's do a rewind. Yeah, first first contact with James Bond. Uh, it was you. <laughs> uh, when I first met you, you were like on and on about James Bond. I was what 11, 1984. I'm like, who the hell is James was Bond? Was 84? Because I'll tell you right now, I have no recollection of years uh, <laughs> or dates or anything. Like that. <laughs> well, I remember hanging with Kurt back in '83. We were playing over in the playground at Patterson Park, and mm -hmm. he was going on about James Bond, Roger Moore is James Bond, and Octopussy. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is an Octopussy? <laughs> And I'm like, oh, you said a bad word. You know, Ten years old. So I, I don't know. I didn't know what it was. And then we were, you and I were hanging out watching movies and stuff. And and we went to the corner video store, and and they had Moonraker. They had three, what is it, three Bond movie? Well, yeah, they only had two. Three. Two. They had Moonraker. They had Moonraker. I can't remember the other two. They had Moonraker. They had For Your Eyes Only. And um, View to a Kill, I think. And for well, before that, it was. Never say never again, but oh yeah, yeah, we, we won't really. We, we were it that way. I will admit, we must have definitely liked it better then because I can hardly get through it anymore. I used to sit there and watch it. It wasn't one. Of, well, I mean, I, you and I went to the video store. Moonraker was actually the ninety-nine cent section right. back when movies were ninety-nine cents <laughs> to rent. And you're like, oh, James Bond. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, let's rent this, you know, whatever. And of course, Moonraker is the first one you start me on. I'm like, oh, this is great. I love it. Well, yeah. I at, at that point I had not. I had not had a large, you know, uh, interaction with Bond. Where my my first thing was, um, I remember you remember my grandparents used to live across the street, mm -hmm. Muscle and Curly Street, and across the alley from them were the Mannings. Right. So we'd be out in the backyard, and they'd come out, and my mother and my father, whoever, they'd be talking, blah 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 blah. And apparently that night, it must have been a Sunday afternoon or something, um, and Harry would say, "said So are you watching?" Uh, James Bond tonight. Saying to me, I was what eleven or whatever, and I'm like, "What's who's James Bond? What's James Bond?" And it was on Her Majesty's Secret Service. That was my first. That was my introduction. So it was a television. Show. Was when a they tele cut it all it was, to hell. It was on ABC, you know, tonight the, the yeah, Sunday yeah. night movie, all you know. Yeah, yeah. that right. guy's voice. Right, tonight, right, right ABC. Tonight. <laughs> James Bond's back. Right. Her Majesty's Secret Service. Right. <laughs> But well, yeah, because I, I remember you and I read Moonraker. Not even a month later, Majesty came on a ABC again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I taped it off of television. So that was my second was Bond second, movie right. off of television, like it was your first off right. of television. So I mean, at that uh, at that point, and even when you know, like we'd start going around the video store and everything, I had no, I I didn't know the order. I didn't know. Mm -mm. You know, now I, you're a newbie. I didn't even know who. I didn't even know all the movies. I didn't know what order they came in. Well, but I'd say probably a good couple years went by, maybe mid to late '80s, is when I remember. And I might have been a worse geek than you. I had the run times of each movie down. I mean, I was like a catalog. <laughs> you're like, you know, yeah, I never what's the it. shortest Bond movie? <laughs> Goldfinger, 108 minutes. <laughs> what's the second short? A uh, second longest? Doctor No, 111 minutes. See, those were details. I didn't pay attention. Oh my God! You know, I could tell you who the key key grip was <laughs> on Thunderball. <laughs> I couldn't nail, but I also remember when I was in uh, seventh or eighth grade. I was in seventh grade. Um, a View to a Kill was out. Mm -hmm. But you know, looking back, it's kind of funny the kind of near misses I had. Um, one time, I was going with Beverly's. Uh, this was the pitch. I was supposed to go with Beverly's brother Billy and and their father to see. I thought we were going to see Octopussy. That was in '83. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. We saw some ninja movie that was rated R that I wasn't supposed to be going to see. You know, I don't think, I don't think my mother didn't know what was going on. Um, but she then probably thought Octopus was rated R just by its title. <laughs> she probably was, oh, good, yeah, some ninja movie. Right. Got to be better than a movie called Octopus. 
But um, like 85, I was on the uh, school paper. I was in seventh grade. And we would go out occasionally. It was like a couple of us with one of the teachers and go see a movie and write about it. Of course, it had to be like PG. And the, when we went for this particular, <laughs> that particular you saw time, Back to the Future in '85 for that paper, didn't you? Yeah. Instead of a view to a kill. No, actually, it was uh, that that time. It was um, uh, view to a kill or just one of the guys. <laughs> and I, what I wanted to see view to a kill, <laughs> but the teacher that took us was like. I don't know, but you know, well, you're 12. Uh, you, you want know, to see Bond? You don't right. give a crap about but, the but just one of the guys. You see, he's there right. You know? yeah, yeah. For a couple What's seconds. What's worse? Yeah. <laughs> Guy killing somebody or there's or, or a judge. <laughs> so five yeah. years later, I would have went to that. <laughs> Once the so, testosterone I mean, was, started to kick yeah, in. Yeah, it was just kind of interesting, you know, I, the kind of the near misses. I, you know, I always kind of think about that, like, you know, what Bond movie did I see in the theater first? You know, and it could have been this one, it could have been that one, but it actually turned out to be... Uh, um, we all went solo. We went Daylights. Daylights right? Yep, we went right. together. Right. And, um, see, I remember in 85, I never made it to see View to a Kill. For some reason, you and I didn't... Make an effort to do it, go see well, it. Maybe we tried, and maybe it never happened because you know, none of us was driving right, anyway, really, so we had to get dropped off at right, the theater. Right, kind of stuff, yeah. But I did, you know, like the closest bit of a view to a kill for me was buying those four find your fate novels. novels. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, the, um, which I still have in my yeah. um, bookcase over there somewhere too. Yeah, and I got the Indiana Jones ones too. But yeah, oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess uh, just going back is just a Living Daylights was the first one in the theater, and there was nothing like. Seeing the gun barrel right, opening come out. as wide as it yeah. was, and the dots were this big, and I'm like, that's here, here we are. Cool. Here we are, like what, 14? I was 13. <laughs> you know, you were 14. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear a bond thing. I heard our first, uh, they they had had our first collective <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> And then Maurice Bender's titles coming yeah, up, yeah. you know, with Aha Song and all that stuff. Right. I was like, oh man, and, you know. And I went, I probably saw, I think I saw Living Daylights two or three times in the theater. It's hard to believe from them days they made what? Six, seven more Bond movies we, since then. How many are, do we have now? There's, uh, this is 22. Yeah, which, what's Quantum? Quantum is 22. 22. Yeah, remember Die Another Day was Bond 20. They were throwing all the books oh, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, Your 20th watch and all right. that stuff. Right. Your top three Bond movies. And why? Go. Jeez, oh, top three? Yeah. Not in any order. They don't Not have to be in any order. order. No. I, I wouldn't do that I, to I, you. I, I, couldn't put, I couldn't put the 20 of them in the order. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. All these fans I've, I've known are like, you know, what's your favorite Bond movie? Oh, I, you can't, you can't do it. If you can, you got a problem because... Well, I'll tell you one that's in the top three. Octopussy. Oh, yeah? Here's why. Mm -hmm. Octopussy, to me, is the be-all, end-all, the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark of the Bond series. It has everything in it. It has humor, it has good looking babes, it has a decent story, it has action, adventure, humor, cool gadgets, um, and just every kind of thing you can imagine happening. You know, it's just it's just kind of like it's one of those globe trotting cool bad guys. You know, cool bad guy. I mean just everything and it's and, and it's Fabergé eggs. <laughs> But it just keeps going, you know. It does, it doesn't lose your interest. And in, uh, there's not a point where I'm really bored at anything because um, you're, I, 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 you're, I agree with you. You know, I mean, and just and just at, at some point, you know, it's just kind of I don't know. It's just good. It, is. it just keeps going. It's, it's a fun, sharp, it's on the edge. Fun, where right? you gotta be. <laughs> it's just fun, you know, fun from start to finish. I love it. So I that's one of kind of I agree with that's you. That's one it's, of my go-to. It's one I, of the longer watch, Bond films, but yet sure. it's crammed with right. a lot it's of got, stuff. It's, it's got it's hardly any downtime. It's, it's got everything. That's in. a good call. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, I know it's a lot of people are kind of you know it's too far fetched or whatever. And yeah, sure. Oh. In the action aspects, him falling know, off a. Of Train roof and all that stuff. I mean, like with me, well, with, okay. Bond, with me, it's entertaining. Me and Bond, I like different ones for different reasons. If I'm in a serious mood, I like this one. If I'm just, let's have some Depends. fun. What do you want to go into it? Right. You want to be entertained, even though it's a little right. far fetched, or do you want to go into it like looking for Ian Fleming somewhere right. in the, in, within it? You know. Right. Another one in the top three. I got to go with Bill Horn <laughs> um, from Russia with Love, just because it's good. You know. It's it's perfect spy movie it's ultimate material. Spy. If you ask me, that's an ultimate, it's ultimate spy, spy movie. You know, um, um, hot girl, yeah. Connery is Bond, cool gadgets, great locations. 
Yes. I mean, you know, Istanbul. Venice. Yeah, uh, you know, they're in Venice. Uh, uh, Orient Express, yeah. you know. Um, great bad guys. And still. Bloody Oh, yeah, that's right, you know. <laughs> and still to this day, probably the, right. best, the best hand to hand combat close quarters sequence. Oh, yeah, you couldn't top that. You know, even with all the crap they can do today, you know, close, you know, and all. I mean, just that, I could watch that. It was that. an exciting, it was an ex, it's an exciting, it's an exciting fight. fight. Um, you know, and they just, it's, it's, it's a real fight to me. It's, it, they just kind of, it's two guys, you know, this is life or death. We're going to wail on each other until somebody stops wailing, you know? Right, right. And the, the one thing that makes me laugh about that is, is how loud is it on a train like that? I mean, I've been on trains before, but not in like, with like sleeping I've been on them before, but not when they were moving. Because the racket that they make in there, it's a wonder nobody comes. <laughs> That, you know, I mean, I know it's a movie, but you know, if you think in real life, <laughs> what's going on in there? I didn't have to worry about next door. Karen was already dead. There, there are two dead people in the next compartment over. It's not like Karen's gonna go, hey. Anyway, yeah. Um, um, so that's that would be that would be a top three. Um, another good choice. Oh man. Well, I, for the third one, I could either go two ways. Because I think the, the underdog needs to get his props, too. I think When Her Majesty's Secret Service is a fantastic movie. Is that the underdog one or no? Well, that, that, that's one of the underdog ones. Because I know, I know, I know that... Because of how misunderstood it well, is with well, the, well, the, the one-time Bond movie. It's that, and it's, I think it's one of those ones that people either think, this is a great movie, or this is a worth... That. You know, I've heard people... I've heard there... It's kind of like... I don't opposite, know. I've heard opposite ends of the spectrum. I've never known anybody who hated it. I've read that. I've read where that like some people think it's like this is the best Bond movie ever, and some think this is one of the, the worst Bond movie. Uh, some of the stuff I've read on different sites. Uh, yeah, where, you well, know? and that's the um, thing. It's all all opinion. So, uh, but the other one, the other one that would be an underdog thing is uh, License to Kill, because I don't think Tim, a lot of people hate that one. I, I don't. I think that's judged unfairly. I agree. Um, a lot of people don't feel it's Bond. It's just. It's like an action movie with the character of James Bond in it, and it's not, he doesn't do any Bondian things in it. But see, I see that's where I disagree. I because, disagree you know, too. Um, because I think it's a, it's a time where we get to see Bond kind of push to an edge, a limit. You know, to me, that's an Ian Fleming. That's, it's Ian Fleming. Daniel Craig could have did that and movie. And Dalton, you know, said from the get-go, he drew more stuff from the books. Sure. Than, his two movies I love. You know, I love the most. You know, and and I, I don't think, I think License to Kill gets an unfair, you, you know, shake as far as, I just think that's a great movie, a great villain. If you look deep within it, it also has some of the motivations, like Sanchez's motivations with loyalty, you know, about how he plays on it, and how Bond takes that and he plays on it. You that's know? that's he, his he, mind. He, he, does he uses it. Mind. it. Yeah. He uses it to say, this is how I can Get you. this guy, right. you know, or whatever, and that's that's important to me because it's not it's not gadgets, it's not, you know, it's it's wit. it's a guy on his own using the the best weapon anybody has, right? You know? So um, that would you know I would I would kind of flip flop between those last two as my third top choice or whatever, but you know. All right, so you got your top four. Uh, top four. <laughs> you sneaky I bastard. Cheat. You sneaky ass. I always cheat. <laughs> well, go ahead. Do one more. I'll give you five. No, it's okay. We'll stop at four. All right, well, what's your... I don't want to get... Three. My bottom three. Bottom three. Oh. And you don't have to be... I, I, I still don't get excited about watching Man with the Golden Gun. <laughs> Even though I think it has some good elements to it. But it's just, entertaining. It, it's entertaining but in it's, a sense, but it's just... It, it's I don't know. I, it's silly. It's I don't. I have a problem with the way it flows. You know, there's some things where it, it kind of goes. It's from, too. It's got too much ridiculous kind of like the whole sumo thing where Bond's pinching the guy's ass and the music's going. Wow. Yeah, what, what is this? A comedy? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think it was. Sheriff the best. Pepper was fun, but he was a little overused. Yeah. Well, I think that was, that was just popular. You know, that was yeah. Dying. At the, people, and I, yeah. People responded to that, so they probably said, "Okay, let's let's shove this guy in here somewhere." Where, you know, just to you know. But see, uh, to me, it was uneven because it's kind of like Bond's <clears throat> mad at one minute, he's slapping Andrea around, and I said, "Where?" Yeah. And then the next minute, he's he he he, and mm -hmm. finally titillating, and all. I'm like, Bond's uneven in this movie. Yeah. He doesn't know if he's pissed off or being a smartass. Yeah. You know, if you ask me. Yeah. The whole fight with Nick Knack, he's fighting a, this midget that's, you know, kicking his ass and throwing wine bottles at him. Yeah. Well, it's fun, it's still, that's silly. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it, it does, it does 
it does play to I think some more of the more ridiculous. But that's what more you know, you know aspects. That's Roger Moore's right, interpretation. Right, right. That's where he went. But with see, it. even even that, I think he was off in that. You know, Bond seemed annoying the, for the most part, which yeah. I guess is not bad. But you know, it just didn't. Come that's why I was. That's what I mean. When it he's just pissed off. Come. He's annoyed he was, about you know, something. He was like, I really don't. Want to well, if I had me <laughs> Mary Goodnight <laughs> as a girl in that movie, I'd be annoyed too. <laughs> You know, that's a problem, too. You know, Britt Eklund's pretty hot, you know, I think. I never thought she was I thought she was hot. Not in that movie. I thought she was hot. I really did. I thought she was, she's a good-looking woman, but I just, I don't know. You know the, her, her personality the just kills the it. Her personality kills it, and the character kills it, because she's just, she's annoying, and you can... When she's an NF agent, too. You see, she's an F, and when you see her with Bond, you can kind of see why he's annoyed. You know, she's annoying. Good you know? night, where are all the car keys? Right. You know, oh, I've the, got the keys and I've got the cell you know, too. You're right. It's just, it's too much silliness. It doesn't... I, the one thing that really gets me is that with someone like Christopher Lee playing the villain, who's played... He's the monumental part, part of the... One of the he's most the best iconic, part of the film. He is the best part of the film. And he, it almost seems like he's he's not in a worthy enough movie. Right. You know? Um, so, I just... I, I have a lot of problems with it. I don't, I don't despise it, but... It would be, if you're going to give me a choice between that and something else, I'm going to Let pick Let me put it this else. way. In, in all 21 that are out on DVD right now, there's not one I hate in the bunch. Mm -hmm. But there are ones I'll watch over others. So, let's, right. I mean, that's just the way to be fair. Right. Yeah, Man with the Golden Gun, yeah, I watch it. I don't, I don't hate it. Right. I mean, I find it a weaker entry compared to Octopussy or, you know, Spy Who Love Me. Right. Or, I mean, I'm talking about Roger Moore's stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, so that's one. Okay, so that's one. Um, I think you only live twice as weak. Yeah. yeah. Um... I'm I'm okay up through Little Nelly, and I got to queue through all that other stuff. Not that I don't I don't find it. I, mean, I got to be in a certain frame of mind to find all that Japanese stuff interesting, interesting. And then at the, you got to get me up to the end with the the wedding part drags that's, on. That's my problem. That's Whoa. my problem. True. And you know, like I I told you, we know before for years, I, I'm late at night or whatever. Oh, I think I'll watch a Bond movie. I always put that one on. Why? It's a guilty pleasure. Why? There's plenty of movies in my collection that I've grown out of. You know why I, I can't I'll, stand them I'll, now. I'll give you a, But I'll watch them anyway, because I'm... I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one theory. It's late. I want I want something to entertain, but I don't want to have to put too much too much well, of this into it. it. I don't That's want to right. get that wrapped up into it, because if I fall asleep, I want to be pissed off that I missed whatever. Whereas that... If I fade it out, okay, I missed the end, but, so, you know, everything just fucking blows so, up anyway. So, so you only have twice as your warm cup of milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, for a while you would have thought that. Gee, I know? think I'm going to be a little insomniatic tonight. I better put on your well, you know, twice. I, I get home and, you know, from working and I'm, it's like 10, 11 o'clock, you know, and I'm, I was a night out at that point. But anyway, it's, it's just, and, you know, and Connery looks... He, he looks he annoyed. He looks tired. He looks, he looks annoyed. Tired. Yeah, he doesn't, he look, doesn't like look like his heart's in it, you know, it's just... And I hate to say it, another one that's weak is Moonraker. Even yeah. though I like Moonraker, that was the first one I saw. Right, I loved, and I loved it. it. I think grew. It went down. I, I still like it. You know, and again, I, I agree with you. There's not one I hate, but um, knowing what I know now, you know, and that it was just tagged on, they got the rights back, and popularity of Star Wars, sci-fi was the big thing. Well, we got to send Bond into space. It's a ridiculous notion when you when you kind of compare it to if, I all the you, other all the other. <laughs> I bet you if it was 1978 and we were having the same conversation yeah. and we knew Moonraker was going to be the next Bond, we'd be excited to right. see it right. and we would want to see Bond right. in space right. because we would be coming off of that <laughs> Star Wars, right. that that kind of high, you know, Star Trek, big, the motion big time picture was sci being made. Sci-fi was hitting one of his big, yeah. big, big golden I'd be, ages I'd be right there with it. Right. They did it. It made a lot of money. The '80s hit, and it was forgotten, right. <laughs> basically. And and like Patrick McNee says on the making of Fear Eyes Only, where where did you know Bond has done this, he's done that, and the last one he went up to space. Now what? Right. Time which to bring was, him back. Which was perfect. Bring him back down to earth. Only, and, uh, Fear Eyes Only was probably the best one to to go with after after that. Exactly. No. Um, my my big point of why Moonraker, besides the part the thing that there's some things that drag. Um, it's, it, it, it needs help with its pacing, I think. Um, yeah, it's a little slow in areas, too. Um, I was disappointed with John Barry's score. I like the kind of grand, you know, space thing. But, and if you, you know, buy the soundtrack, there's not enough of it. A lot yeah. of people love Moonraker's score. 
And as I'm watching I the think movie, the, theme, the one theme is, and I love the, the title song. I love the title song because to me, because to me, if you look at Shirley, it's, Shirley sounds like a Bond. Shirley thing. Bassey's three Bonds, uh, you know, Goldfinger was like very brash, and you know she was young and everything. I like um, Diamonds Are Forever. Feels like some type of casino act where these women are dancing in casino right. diamonds off forever, right, and right. you're in a casino. So to me, <clears throat> her singing on that and the way the music flowed fit the element of what. Right. The big thing of Diamonds Are Forever was like a lot of that White House Las right. Vegas right. feel. But I just I, I love the way the song. She it's very lush, you know, it's very she just I think her, her the the vocal vocal wise, she just kind of emits this Yeah, it's I don't know. So it's, sweet it's, it's very beautiful, you yeah. know, to me. I mean almost You think it fits the film though? Not really. Because, you know, like, to me, Gladys Knight's License to Kill does not go yeah. with the... Yeah. They needed something darker. Like, You Know My Name. That would have fit better with License I don't, to I Kill. Don't you, need a, you need a dark song to go with a dark yeah. movie, and she was too yeah. upbeat for that For yeah. that song. I, I don't think it really goes with the movie theme-wise. And like I said, his... Like, towards the end of the movie, when he comes up with the... the, the you know, his later, his later work in Bond movies, um, he, I think he was good with coming up with themes. You know, and he kind of recycled them throughout the film. You know, if you could look at um, Octopussy, View to a Kill. He really doesn't follow up one motif in Moonraker, does he? Not he does real. use the not theme really. a little bit. Like the, uh, just a he uses bit. the song on the, like, the tender moments. There's, the not, girl. there's nothing really memorable, I think. Well, I like the journey of the space. End. This, up till the end. Right. 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 That, that's I like stuff. the cable car chase. Yeah, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> That's just, that's just okay. Okay. But, and, and my, my biggest stickler was um, he brings, he pulls the 007 theme out of the closet for, from, from what, eight years before? It was in Diamonds Are Forever. And it's so, it's a funeral dirge, you know. Dun, 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 that's because it's Roger Moore playing Bond and well, he sleepwalks through. But I mean, you got He sleepwalks through the movie. It's a freaking boat chase where they're, they're, they're lobbing bombs at him while he's going down the river. But did you see his emotion while he. Well, you know, well, that was the piece looking around. around too. Yeah, they're, they're firing at me, which really gets me mad because I like the boat. I think I'll just the boat was it. cool. It didn't last more. Than it two didn't minutes. last more. Than two. <laughs> so there we go. Top three bottles. It served its purpose. He went to the and he found, got, the, found, found the flower the place, or whatever, and then the crazy broads, and, and then the steady like seeing snakes strangle their men. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Oh, I get. The I'm floor. done. You get the floor. All right, Senator. So my, <laughs> my top. Few Bond films. And why? Okay. <laughs> well, the first one, I, first one I'd like to start with is For Your Eyes Only. Mm. To me, it's the best of Roger Moore's. Yeah. <laughs> Weeds out. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> to me, that's the best of Roger Moore's Bonds. Yeah. Um, Very strong. Sp Spy would love me being a close second in, in terms of like a certain actor's. Bond series. Right. Fear Eyes Only to me is no nonsense Bond. It's the closest to Fleming Roger Moore gets. The story is is incredible. I mean, yeah. it's I, I love all the it's characters in it. It's a solid story. Yeah. There's not a lot of bullshit and hokiness right. to it. Right. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's realistic. I mean, you I mean, go you go from like the silliness of Moonraker, and then you go right into the beginning of the movie. We're back to serious James Bond, where he's visiting his wife's grave, right. and he's and Roger Moore Which is, is just a nice character. Kind beautiful of way to start the movie. film, and how great to end the pre-title sequence with Bond meeting up with Blofeld <laughs> after you know the unknown, the unnamed right. the villain, unnamed villain right. you know, damn well <laughs> Blofeld. We can't How that <laughs> he must have been through ten Persian cats in the past fifteen years of Bond, you know, you know, and he and that's to, finally he gets his revenge. We know Blofeld's out of the way, and that's kind of a neat way to take Connery's Bond and George Lazenby's Bond and just weave it into Roger yeah, Moore's that's world. What it is, you know, nice continuity, kind of linking. Yeah, it just links it together. Like together. Spy Who Loved Me, married only once, but okay. Right, right. To say that this is the same James this Bond character guy, we've been seeing all know, along. We right. Know the face has been changed. Yeah, and I like years. that. Yeah. Not yeah. to say that I, you know, I was like hard up for continuity, like constantly, because yeah. each film does fall on its own. Well, you know, I remember one of the books we used to look at, um, you know, about behind the scenes stuff. I yeah. know when Lazenby took over, I think it was Lazenby, they were talking about pre-title sequence being like a 
him coming out of plastic surgery. Yeah, yeah, they were gonna write like, it that yeah. way. And I'm glad they didn't do that because you know if they, it's a decent idea, it's but not I, a bad idea. But you know, I think in the I long think, run, they, I think you know you give your you, you go on the assumption that your audience has some at least a modicum of intelligence to them. You know, they're gonna figure it out. You know, they're not they're not dummies. You don't have to hit them over the head. You know, and I think the way they did with Lazy Me Better, you know, you know, this never, you know, that little kind of joke at the end. This, well, this, this never, never had the, the other, other fellow. fellow. That's <laughs> a that's a like a two way joke right, right there. And I always figured, you know, haha, ha, Sean Connery right. yeah, never picked up <laughs> some broad shoes off the beach and had a fight on the beach, you know. But then a lot of people were saying, well, I thought it was, you know, the Cinderella story where, you know, the right. glass slipper he right. picks up the slipper and you know right. she runs well, off. You can take it. you can take it both yeah. ways, you know, yeah. double edged sword. But yeah, for your eyes only. Um, great action sequences, yet a, yet another treat to Bond ski ski chases and scenes like in Majesty. I mean, I like the ski stuff. Bond's Bond's on snow. He's underwater. Right. He's climbing a mountain. Right, kind and of another all over all over the all place. place. Yeah, right. with with beautiful women in it. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> that yak of a brink. <laughs> <laughs> I love East German skating coaches. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, she, can, <laughs> she can wrap my wiener schnitzel any day. But and When I was a kid, I had a crush on BB. Mm. Then I got older and I was like, no, nah, she's near. <laughs> she's pretty and everything. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Cuba! And, and probably, you know, I think Roger Moore is probably the best performance as Bond. He's very, know? he's very sensitive in the role. You know, he's making his jokes, and there's fun and laughs in yeah, it, like right. Roger Moore does, but right. he plays it serious, it's more serious. He's he's concerned for the female lead. Right. He understands that she's been through, you yeah. know, he's, he gives his condolences. I know you lost your parents. I'm sorry right. the Havelocks are gone. You know, of course, he, his mission's something a little bigger, bigger than, than, than the Havelocks. Right. right. You know, the A-Tax system, I mean, it's just, I just, yeah, you know, it's you, great. to me... The score, Bill Conti. Yeah. What a. F and I know a lot of people are going to yell at me because every <laughs> uh, everybody I see on the internet is like, John Barry is the shit. Anytime they do a non Barry score, it always sucks, you know. And I'm sorry, but you know what? I love John Barry, but you know what's funny? I find myself attracted to the ones Barry didn't do. Mm -hmm. George Martin, you know, um, Bill Conti, yeah. David Arnold, uh, uh, well, Hamlish. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. Hamlish was, yeah. yeah, but he's a little. He's kind of uneven. Yeah. You know, but anyway, um, yeah. Bill Conti's score was to me a breath of fresh air. I just couldn't see one, if your eyes were one of your favorite Bond soundtracks. Right? It is. It's yeah. definitely yeah. one of the top three yeah. of Bond soundtracks. Yeah. I, I just love every. You know, just each song goes with the feel. Right. You know, and and it's kind of funny because you know I like this Rocky score too. Yeah. And you know he hits that that cowbell and <laughs> yeah. bam, 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 yeah. and I'm thinking dan 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 dan. It does. It, it has the yeah. same flow. He's yeah. like he's, and you're already revved up because right. the Rocky theme always powers me up when right. I watch the Rocky series. Right. And I'm yeah. like, Bond comes out in the gun barrel and you're bam, bam, bam. and I'm like, hey, that's yeah, different. A little different. There's yeah. no, there's, it's, it's <laughs> keyboard and you know more. Well, um, I always think it's interesting to see what. Um, I always look forward to the gun barrel because I want to see what kind of music what choice kind of, they yeah, they use. And kind of, it, it kind of, almost kind of sets the tone. You know what you kind of what you might think you're in for. You know what I mean? Like if it's a if it's a non berry composer, you know. I I always like this. I I mean I'm kind of with you. I I love Barry, um, but I like to see what other people are going to do with you know like the Bond theme or just like Michael in, Kamen, in, in general. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. So. It's I, it is refreshing. Uh, uh, then the next one, um, License to Kill. Love it. I just I never get tired of it. it. If it comes on a Sunday afternoon matinee on TNT, I will sit and watch it. Mm -hmm. I was delighted when the DVD came out in the new collection and it was uncut mm -hmm. and they added more. Funny enough, they added more gore. It was stuff that I think was originally going to give it an R rating or something. Mm -hmm. You see more Felix getting his oh, leg. Yeah, his leg getting yeah. Himself, yeah. You see like the stub after the uh, or something like that. Yeah. You see what's his face? Uh, oh, it's, uh, uh, you oh, see Zerby's. Zerby's head explodes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Milton Crest and Morton Crust <laughs> all over the freaking <laughs> all over the thing. <laughs> you know, it was just stuff like that, yeah. and um, it's just to me, it's, it it brought Bond because I got so used to watching Roger Moore's era of Bond. Yeah. And then Living Daylights was bringing things back into like Ian Fleming land. Yeah. It was a serious, you know. I don't think I don't think you can change actors and kind of expect them to not bring. 
a little something of their own to, you know, the proceedings or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Timothy Dalton was a classically trained. You know, I don't know. I thought it was a wonderful and, and, and it's and it's not knocking Roger Moore. I like Roger Moore's bonds for what they are, you know. But Dalton brought a more seriousness. See, it's in, all about in, in, in persona. You know what I mean? You know, he seemed a little more intense. You know, a little more. Whatever. He's you know, Ian, whatever. to me. He's, he's Ian Fleming, he's, or, or at, least, at least a close, you know, close to it. See, I've I've read Casino Royale. I've read Live and Let Die. About a quarter of From Russia with Love. <clears throat> I think that's about it. It's been a long time. Actually, I reread Casino Royale before the film came out, and I still didn't quite finish it, but I got through most of it. Um, that is a. That's just the way I envision Bond in the books that I've read. License to Kill is that James Bond, mm -hmm. and that's what made me. That's why when Casino Royale came out, and they brought him, Daniel Craig, into the world of Ian Fleming, and right. I just love that. Right. We're done with invisible cars and all this other stuff, and yeah. you know, which is fun. Like I said, that's the entertainment value right. of Bond. Right. But when I want to go into something and just like get serious, right. I want to see pure spy adventure, right. and I want to see a good story, and I want to see Bond bleed. I want to see Bond. Right. Be emotional. Uh, 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 I want to see as Bond first, as human. As a, He's a human right, being. Right, exactly. Right. I love that. And that's why I like for, for your eyes only because Roger Moore plays Bond as a as a human being right. and not as you know superhero right. or somebody who goes into space and just is like, hey, I'm an astronaut. Right, all, of right, all of a sudden, yeah. you know what? That whole centrifuge thing. Yeah. That sped up his training. <laughs> you're right. Go around at 100 miles an hour. You're ready to go into space if you can live through that, right? Sheesh. <laughs> Then he gets in his space and he's just like, eh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's his hair, there's his space, sitting in space. I'd be like, in space. Yeah, right, right, right. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> the wings are beginning to glow. Jesus Christ, are we going to make it out of here alive? Now, nah, Bond's on the, on the mission. <laughs> he's busy talking about Noah's you're, Ark. You're right. <laughs> All right. All right, so we got. From Russia, uh, yeah, for your eyes only. For your eyes only. License, license to kill. To kill. Um, rounding out the top three. Yeah, but I get one more because you won. That's one true because I cheated. All right, Want Her Majesty's Secret Service. For most of the reason you said, um, to just further go on a little bit more on Majesty's Secret Service, it's it's like the book a lot. I didn't read the book, but I read like um, a, a breakdown of what the novel is about. Same 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 kind of concept. Mm -hmm. Lazenby, I think, did a wonderful job in it being a no-name actor. Yeah. He, um, he, he had a lot to carry in that movie. That's true. That, that's it's really just, true. They gave him the shit end of the plot to just jump into playing James Bond and have his wife taken away from him, and he's got to react emotionally. Well, it's, it's not just that, I think. It's, it's that, you know, he's got... We're, we kind of catch Bond... This is kind of Bond at a, at a turning point, you know? I mean, he, this, is, this is probably more romance... Than we ever see in a Bond movie. It's the you know, yeah. It's you know, it's, it's, it's a true it's, out love story built around the action, a, 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 a spy plot or whatever. You know. And I'll go with that yeah. because again, it's Bond being human, right? You know, that's the funny thing is my top Bonds are the Bond, the human Bonds. Mm. You know, I, you know, you. I, I love Die Another Day. A lot of people don't like that. Yeah, one. yeah, it's silly as hell. Oh, yeah. But you know what's funny is what's uneven about that is the first half of the movie is is to me what will be James Bond. He's mm -hmm. captured in North Korea. He's tortured and all that stuff. I'm like, ooh, wow, that's the Ian Fleming kind of shit right yeah. there. Yeah. You know, and then all the next thing you know, he's got an invisible car right. and he's racing some guy with jewels in his face right. <laughs> around a precipice in I, in up, Iceland. Up, up in Iceland. Yeah, 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 up near the Arctic. And I'm like, this movie just just. Did a three, just did a one eighty on me, you know. Well, see, I think I think that's a, not but I, I think off track, but I think that's a perfect example of you know, where they they give us a movie where we got your first half is your realistic shit, second half is your let's go into outer space. You know, normally, it's secret agent out to space. where it's you know it just jumps along, it just shuffles along. This one was complete they went, realism they, they went to, and a complete. They want to have every, something for but I love it. I love it. I think yeah, it's it, yeah. it's it's very entertaining. It is. It is great. I, I, and I don't understand why people don't like it. But you know, you know and I wanted to put that in my but, top three, and I can't. There's just it's just yeah. too many Bond movies that I like that I can't squeeze in right. there. But I got to go from the heart and go with Her Majesty's Secret right. Service as number three because mm -hmm. it was the second Bond movie I saw. I thought I thought once he gets up to the clinic of his Gloria. 
There's a little slow time just there. A little bit. Just a little just bit. A little bit. Like, like the whole thing of meeting or, uh, Fraulein Bunt, another classic Bond chick. Mm -hmm. Right. Them going up the hill. Right. Um, age, you know, number, number two, 10. Number 10. Yeah. Making ugly noises, <laughs> following them up the hill. Again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> following them up the hill and all that stuff and <laughs> having to hear do you know how christmas trees are grown uh, okay that's right. just that's pause just pause right there one of the most inane songs why the hell i understand you know they they probably get pressure from producers oh let's throw something uh, i would have been happy if they just took it off the soundtrack my god that i let you know i tried when i was going through the soundtracks in the car you know whatever what I, I tried. I can't get through it. It's just horrible. I can't. It's either. a damn horrible. I don't think song. I've ever heard it all the way through. It's horrible. Um, yeah, it's a shame he did. And you know what's funny is it going back to this plastic surgery you were talking about. That'd be that would be messed up if they went with that plot, and then he bows out after the first movie, <laughs> and we bring Connery <laughs> right, back. Right. And, he, and Bond has to go back to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Right. See, Put me back. Yeah. Let's, let's not go with that. Let's not go with that. So they made, the right, choice. They made a right choice on that. <laughs> Um, and I right, get to so pick one more. This is my freebie um, for Marshall with Love. The ultimate <laughs> spy adventure. Beautiful women, great locations, a fantastic Everything. fight. Everything. And you know what's funny is once once you once that fight happens on the train, it, it doesn't even stop. Yeah, that's true. Off the train, uh, on the helicopter, helicopter, the boat, the boat the, yeah, the, yeah, the, and the then finally the shoot. Thing. Oh my God! Yeah, you know, yeah. you're, I mean, you know, even the love story in that, because I think between uh, Majesty and From Russia with Love, you know, there there is more of an element of a love story. Bond's pretty much with these one women. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, except for the girls of his glory, but his relationship, he seems more. He seems more of a lover. He seems more, not just like just trying to bet him and be done with it. Right. You know, he really seemed. Connery does come off as like being really, really interested in um, in uh, Tatiana Romanova, mm -hmm. Tanya Romanova. Uh, as Bond ends up being, you know, more amorous with uh, Tracy and Majesty's right. Secret right. Service, uh, I think it's a well-written story. From what I read of the book, it is it is target on with the book. Is it really? The book actually the book starts with the um, with a naked woman on a lawn giving with Grant, Grant a, a massage. massage. Okay. Yes, that is how the book starts. Chapter one. Is it? The, you know, and it's basically like the tan body on the lawn mm. was was muscular, and, and it describes oh, Grant. Okay. And then, it, like this woman comes out, and she takes her clothes off. She's a blonde. She starts massaging him and all that stuff. Right. Um, you know, Morrison he comes out, or Lottie Lenya's character, right. Rose okay. Clebb comes out. They, you know, they they test him. He's a strong guy. You know, right. all that stuff. I mean, it's all in the, it's all in there, and it's just um, you, the organization of Spectre, um, and it really does have continuity. It continues. Really, the whole plot is. Caused because of what happened in Doctor No. It's all about the revenge, revenge and of, of their their operative Doctor No okay. by using the Lecter decoder to bait Bond. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just um, I don't know. It's just a fantastically done yeah. film. And yeah, like you said, I go a Bill Horn on that. Yeah. That's the best Probably. goddamn Bond movie ever. <laughs> Ain't got all that bullshit like them Roger Moore Probably. goddamn movies. Probably. I remember when I was a kid. I a lot of the. Early Connerys, the first couple, Doctor No from Russia Love, were never like my favorites because yeah. I was really looking for the action and the yeah. craziness. Right. And then after a while, you know, you, you get mature and you're like, well, wait a minute, you gotta go back to like basic story. You don't, you know, something that's got action and doesn't yeah, go then, off the yeah, deep end. Yeah, because then, then you then you watch some stuff when you get older. You watch stuff where it's just something blows up here, something blows up there, and you're like. You know, it's, eh. it's what you catch on cable at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want it. It's not worth it. Show anymore. <laughs> the next thing you know, you're watching a movie called Hard Target. <laughs> I didn't think that was bad. Actually. <laughs> oh well. What the hell do I know? That's my warm milk. <laughs> so those are the best. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no. God knows I'd want to throw a few more in there. I know sure, you would too, sure, but those yeah. are the ones that jump out at me. So that's what I went with. My three least favorite ones, you're not going to believe this. Really? They're your exact three. Really? Mm -hmm. Man with the Golden Gun. Man with the Golden Gun. <clears throat> Entertainment value, yeah. But. As a device in terms of Bond series entry, it is <laughs> silly. I just. I don't want to even hesitate to use the word silly. Yeah. It's a silly movie. It's com Bond is completely uneven and is, like I said, he's serious. He's ticked off, like you said, annoyed. Right. Then he's like making jokes, titillating, and you know, um, whatever, all the yeah. puns he makes. And then he's pissed off again. Yeah. Like, 
Bond was on his period in that movie. <laughs> I want a pistol. <laughs> Two seconds later, I said, "Where?" Right, like, right. Whoa! Right. We just did, yeah. did a Sean yeah. Connery there. <laughs> Talk about who needs a mind all. <laughs> um, you know, Roger Moore was, I guess, still trying to find himself in that. One. But you know what's funny? I love Live and Let Die. Live and Let Die very closely made it in my top three or four. Mm -hmm. That would have been number five. Mm -hmm. um, I love Live and Let Die. And again, people are like, "Oh, it's stupid," and this and that. Live and Let Die is very much like the book, too. Mm -hmm. I read that one all the way through, mm -hmm. and, you know, Mr. Big was in it. They didn't have Kananga. There wasn't yeah, that split right. it was just, personality it was thing. Big, that, that, yeah. um, you know, he was he was one and the same, but right. it was all Mr. Big. Right. But, yeah, so... So, Man of the Golden Gun, silly. Man of the Golden Gun, silly. Moonraker, silly. <laughs> Agent in outer space, come on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I was upset, right? <laughs> I like the pre-title sequence. Yeah. Great. And credits roll. Yeah. <laughs> that movie could have just been buying some out of a plane out of parachute. And End credits. <laughs> I got my six dollars worth. But there are some there, there's some funny parts in the film. Hugo Drax. Coin the word cucumber and sandwich. <laughs> and change the face of <laughs> tradition. Yeah, you've heard it since. Change the tradition of French. Or, or German, what was he, German? Hugo Drax is yeah, German. German. Change, change the face of, like, the, <laughs> you know, his nationality's menu forever. Can I press you a cucumber you sandwich? I'd like to see you try to feed those Dobermans out. <laughs> Snap your finger, they're going to look at you like you lost your mind. <laughs> Bond gets a cucumber sandwich, the dogs get fresh steak? What the hell kind of host are you? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, oh, yeah, Moonraker. <laughs> Holly Goodhead. Pretty. It's pretty. Not striking. She's not Honey Rider or Tanya or, or you know. Uh, and then You Only Live Twice. Yeah. I like the way it starts. I can watch the first 20 minutes of You Only Live Twice and I love it. Mm -hmm. It's Bond. Yeah. Up, he's faked his death. He comes back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, gets, he gets to Japan. He, the whole thing with Deco Henderson. Everything up to the fight at, at uh, Osato's place and all that right. stuff. Leading all up to that great. Right. Once the Japanese stuff starts. You're bored. Turn Bond into a Japanese. It's and it's completely filmed in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everything is Japan, and I just was like, I like when they roam around a little bit. I love Japan. I mean, yeah. I like the beautiful exotic location, but well, the, we're stuck that, in that, Japan. That was probably the thing, though. You know, up to that point, you'd, you'd probably be hard pressed to find a, a big studio movie that was actually filmed like somewhere exotic, like Japan or something like that. You know, I mean, probably those things were done when, before then, you, you, Japan was a sound stage at, <laughs> at, in uh, Los Angeles or something, you know. So, I mean, to actually go over, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but, you know, to actually go over there, that was probably a big, probably a big to do, you know, so. Well, really, you just cut the meat, the dead meat out of there. <laughs> you go from the little Nelly scene. Yeah. Take me to the volcano that's, at the see, end that's of the movie. That's what I'm saying. And Fly with little Nelly right to the volcano. And end the fire there. Let's start End that shit damn up. movie right there. <laughs> that's it. So that's it. I mean, that's funny. You and I picked the same three least favorite Bond films. I know. Great minds think alike. Not that we would know. <laughs> but like I said, I mean, really, the rest, the rest of the one there are... I mean, there's so many other good. Yeah, I mean, it was like you just thing. can't get to it. You know, you can't it, depending on what kind of mood you're in. You know, a lot of people will probably be surprised. You know, like Goldfinger. Yeah, well, I mean, list. I like Goldfinger too. But, oh, it's you know. great. It's wonderful. I mean, it's one that sets the tone. But if if I'm gonna go to my DVD collection, I'll reach for From Russia with Love before I'll reach for Goldfinger. Mm -hmm. It's just me. It depends on my mood. I mean, you know, yeah. what, what are you gonna do? And I I love Thunderball. You know, yeah, I really do. But you know, it's kind of like. Do I want to spend <laughs> two and <laughs> two whatever <laughs> runtime, please? <laughs> 130, uh, you know, 134. Is it 34? 134. It's it's about two hours and 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. Two hours and 15 minutes at the oh, most. It was like the second longest you know, before Majesty. Before, yeah. is two hours and 20. Right. So. so. Well. We love Bond. Okay. That's J. Uh, that's right. James Bond all the way. Come on, November seventh. <laughs> November seventh. I'll see you at the premiere. <laughs> we'll see who's getting off work. <laughs> well, let's, let's do paper rock scissors to see who's getting off. Work. <laughs> I 
thought you were going to do a rock. <laughs> like you're a rock head. <laughs> right up here. Granite. <laughs> All right. Granite.